Welcome to another In the Labs with Todd. If you're anything like me, when you get home, you want to throw your change into something. It ends up being a bowl, maybe, or something like that. Well, let me show you how to make something even better. Let's go take a look at how I made that in the software. Let's have a look at the files that we've provided to you so you can make your own coin bank. If we go ahead and open up a fresh install of vCarve Desktop, open up an existing file, and there are the two files that you have. There's the coin bank top, which is to make the top, and then there's the coin bank rings and bottom, and this is to bit make the center bit or the pot or the base or the jug that you're going to put underneath your coin top. So let's open that up and have a quick look. It'll take a second to load, but once it loads in, make sure that you read and understand the important notes that are here. Um, check all the parts and all of my settings and make sure that they are fitting for your actual setup at your end and recalculate all the tool paths appropriately. Okay. And let's quickly tile this so we can have a look at both views. So we have the 2D view up top and the 3D view at the bottom. You see right in the center of our job space is a dome that's actually a negative dome. If we take a look at our setup here, this is set up to be um, a double-sided job. It's uh, The job size is 7x7 seven seven, and the thickness of the material that I happen to have on hand was an inch um, point two thick. Um, of course you're going to need to change that depending on what you have. I'm starting in the center and I'm going to flip from bottom to top and that's very high resolution. And we'll just click OK. So that's great. Uh, let's take a look at our second side. There's nothing on our second side except for some vectors that I'll explain in a minute. So let's pop back over to the top side again and have a look at our modeling tab. Now, of course, this is a 3D model in the middle of um, your job. And this is actually, now it's included in this file, so you don't need to worry about downloading it or finding it any place that's in the actual file. But if you ever wanted to know where I got that from, it actually is a piece of clip art called Dome Dish 45 that comes free with your software. So if you look at your clip art tab under clip art and in domes and dishes, it's this fella right here. So if you ever need him again, you can go ahead and download it if you haven't already, but that is where he is. Um, and we're going to go back to our modeling tab. And I added in a zero plane. That way we'll get a nice transition as we're machining from uh, the surface of our material down into our dish. Let's have a quick look at our tool paths. And because that when we open up our tool path tab, it does cover up the, the side of our uh, windows here, our panes. We're just going to retile those, and that'll fix it for us and make it look good. So the first thing we cut is the dowel holes, which you're going to want to again take a look at and make sure that you adjust this to fit the dowels that you may have on have on hand. And this is the system we're going to use to make sure that we flip when we flip over our part that it actually lines back up again. Let's just go ahead and turn that on and have a look at that tool path for us. So I'm going to go down three quarters of an inch, which actually in the end was a bit deep. It didn't matter in the end, but um, if you if if I wanted to I can make this point six which is actually what I did for when I do the um, the center and the base um, rings uh, we actually don't go quite as deep as this I'm using an end mill this is the same end mill that I use for all of the cuts all of the um, end mills uh, end mill cuts that I do I use the same tool I didn't want to have a bunch of different tools so I have one tool for doing all of the end mill work and then one ball nose end mill to do any kind of finishing I need to do. So really in the end you only need two tools to cut this whole project with. And it's just an offset pocket and it goes ahead and does its work. So if we close this down and we have a look at what that looks like when we preview it then you'll just see that it's just going to make three holes and it's not too too crazy. Let's have a look at our uh, roughing. Now I decided to rough out the dish. Now you're going to see that I only rough out half of this. I don't actually cut the top part of this dish, only the bottom half. This is a, an interesting technique that you can use if you have a 3D model, especially a VCarve uh, desktop or pro where you can't actually edit a model. You can just isolate using a vector the part that you want to cut and it won't cut the rest of it. So in this case I only want to cut half 
half of the dish and um, it's just going to do that for me. So I'm going to use a uh, my end mill to do my roughing, same end mill that I used, did in the last tool path. I'm going to make sure that I have a selected vector which I have there. I have a machining allowance added to that. No boundary offset. That's important. I don't want to go outside of my boundary. I want to keep my tool inside of this half circle. I'm going to use Z-level roughing and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. I'll just recalculate it. Only takes a second. Let's just go ahead and preview that visible tool path and it's going to cut that in there nicely and do a nice job so that when I go in with my ball nose end mill to clean that up, do my finishing pass, I don't have a whole lot of material to remove. And that looks great. Now because I, I didn't want to do a bunch of tool changes, I wanted to sort of group all of my like tools together, my like tool paths together, I decided to do my profile cut next. So let's just have a look at that. And that's pretty easy. I'm only going to go down half the distance of my material, half the thickness of my material, so that's 0.6. I'm going to use the same end mill I used before. I'm going to go outside this line, and I've decided to add in four tabs to hold it in place. And that way my tabs will actually be proud of the center of my material. So if we go ahead and preview this tool path, you'll see that my tabs are actually in the center of my material which this also allows me to have some um, security in knowing that when I do my finishing that those tabs are not going to break because I'm still relying on the half of the material I have left everywhere else to hold this in place. When we do look at my finishing pass, you'll see that I use the ball nose end mill and it's the same ball nose end mill I'm going to use when I actually do the bottom of the um, coin bank. I'm going to use a selected vector and I'm going to do a slight boundary offset. That's because the geometry of this tool, which is the round bottom, if I don't do that, what I end up with is on the inside lip along here, which should be nice and flat, ends up having some odd little tool marks because the my bottom of my ball nose is round and the end mill that I use to rough it with is straight. So if I don't do that, then I do end up having a bit of odd material left behind. So this gets rid of that. I'm going to do it with a raster, and I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. And I'll just take a second to calculate that. And we're going to go ahead and preview that visible tool path. And when it goes in, it's going to clean up nicely those little shelves that I have there, that stadium seating that we've put in there and we're going to get rid of that so we'll have a nice smooth surface to slide our coins down into the hole in the center. Now you'll notice that the center is still going to be in there from the top. We're actually not going to cut that out until we do the other side of this particular part and that's when we're actually going to remove the center. When it's all done you'll see that we have a nice smooth part and it looks really really good. Okay. Let's go ahead now and flip over to the back side. And this is a series of circles. And we're going to use these to, first of all, I was worried that when I cut the sample part that I had, it was going to be quite heavy. I didn't want it to be a really super heavy lid. Um, so I cut out some material. I leave the, a ring in the middle, which is important so that, that when you put the coin in and the lid doesn't get too thin, obviously, there, but also it has a little bit of a backing that it can hit and fall down in, which is nice. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. So let's just go ahead and take a look. So these are the dowel holes that we're going to use. We're actually going to cut these into the spoil board on the CNC before we um, do do the, well, actually after we'll take the material off, we'll just cut these into our spoil board and we'll put uh, dowels in those holes and we'll flip over our part, or our, our wood, and we'll put it back down onto our CNC bed and that way we'll know exactly where it fits and it lines up perfectly. So let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. And the great thing about this is I can make sure that my, my holes actually line up. If I rotate this, if I can see through those, because I'm looking at both my front and my back at the same time my uh, my previews, then if they actually, if I can see through those holes, then I know that they're lined up and so everything will be will be correct when I do my flip. Now we have the next one, which is going to be our pockets. So this is going to clean out between these two lines here, these two vectors. And I'm going to come back to this 
in a bit, but it's important to know how deep you want to go with this. This was my second time doing this, and the first time I actually the ring the, the center ring broke out because I went too deep. I didn't have enough material on the back side of this dish to hold it in place, and the ring broke out. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make sure you don't do that same mistake. But for now, this is the corrected depth. I'm going to use that same end mill that I've used so far. It's going to make four passes. I'm going to do an offset raster, and we're going to go ahead and calculate that, and you'll see that it gives us those two rings. And we can go ahead and preview that visible tool path, and it's going to go ahead and clean that up for us and remove all that material. Now, again, it's not going to be obvious um, how thick our part is at the very bottom of the dish on the other side, so in here. And I'm going to show you in a minute how to figure that out. Let's go ahead on to our next pocket. Now this is the hole that's going to go right through the center where your coin is going to fall through. I've made this um, the right diameter for uh, I think it's one and a quarter inch round um, and that fits most um, of the change that we have here in the UK. So you might need to modify that slightly but it should be a good size for US or Canadian currency as well. Um, and we're going to go down 0.55 of an inch. That's going to cut right through the other side and give us a hole. Same end mill as before, offset tooling, calculate that. Let's preview our visible tool path and we should see in the end it should pop through and we should see exactly what we want to see. It's perfect. Let's look at our center. Now also what I wanted to do is I wanted to clean off this the top of this ring um, just to make sure that if, I, if there was any chipping that occurred then it would get rid of that. Um, you can choose to cut this part or not. It's, it's not needed for it. Again the same end mill. I'm going to cut down a quarter inch, calculate that, and we're going to preview that visible tool path. Now one of the things I noticed that because of the way the grain was in the wood that I was using, and it happens to go the same way in this uh, in our preview, is that the bits that were on the side here actually chipped off on me, um, which isn't a bad thing. It's on the underside of the lid. Nobody's ever going to see it until you take your money out. Um, but if I had had my way, I would have maybe done that slightly different. Maybe put a bevel on it with a V-carve bit. Um, that way it, um, I could I could have hid that little chip that was there and it wouldn't look as funny. Probably nobody's ever going to notice. Um, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to profile out the edge. We're going to cut this out going to go down the other half. So this is this is going to line up with the other side of our part. So when we cut through, um, we should just see tabs holding on our part. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Again, the same one I've used before. And we're going to use an offset. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And let's preview that visible tool path. And you will see that once it's all done, we're going to be able to see our tabs halfway through our material. And there they are. So everything should hold in place. It looks really good. Our hole is where it belongs. Everything looks nice and smooth. I'm really, really happy with that. Now, like I had said a while ago, my problem was when my ring broke out that the thickness here wasn't enough to hold it in place. And it actually broke it. Actually, I, I cut right through it. I wasn't paying attention. So um, what I didn't do or failed to do was to check this thickness. Now because I have both sides showing in my preview, then if I hold down my control key and hold my mouse over top of this area, you'll see down here there's a bit of there's a thickness setting or a thickness number. That tells me how thick I have through my actual preview. So the full two sided 3D thing, I have about 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.2 I would say just to make it easy, of thickness of material here. So that should be enough to hold everything together and me not, um, not the ring not break out, which in the end it actually was. Okay now, now that we've gone through all those, you can save those off or modify those as you need them, and then off you go. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and seen how I created the top and all the tool paths for that, let's have a look at the second file that we've given you, which is for the rings and the bottom. Let's open that up. And 
just to make things a little bit different, a little easier for you to understand, we're going to go ahead and preview our tooling before we actually go through the tool paths and why I did things. Uh, I will point out that you'll notice that there's this dish here going on. This is actually the same um, dome that we used for the top or the lid of our coin bank given a, a certain shape height and a base height and then subtracted so that way we get this inverted hole that we're going to use for the bottom of our coin bank. So let's just have a quick look and preview all of our tool paths both sides. Again this is a two-sided job. You'll see we have our dowel holes now. This is going to cut out the shelves. This is going to cut out the actual profiles of the rings and there are no on those profile cuts there are no tabs on this side and then we're going to rough out the bottom of the base and we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a finishing pass in there to clean it up to give that that round bottom flipped it over this is the second side we're doing our profile cuts you'll see there are the tabs are now showing up on the back side and then we're going to do a quick molding tool path to give us a nice rounded bottom so this is what we have or what we should have in the end when we're all done now the important bit I want to point out, or there's two things actually that are really important. One is that the tabs you won't see initially from the top side. They don't arrive until you cut the bottom side. That's important. And also that this shelf on the top ring is actually 0.6 of an inch deep, which is the exact same depth as the lids lip is so it fits in in here where these other ones are only a quarter inch deep so the so the the lid will fit into them but won't fit that fit down snug so that I wanted to do that on purpose that way I could know which was which once you get these all cut out they kind of all look the same so um, and also that means that you can go ahead and cut as many of these center rings as you want and they'll stack up nice you can stack them up and you can make your coin bank as tall as you would like so those are sort of the important parts of this. So let's close, let's reset our preview and close it down. And we'll go through these one at a time. The dowels, you've seen this done before. Um, I didn't go down quite as deep as the, the other ones I did for the lid, but I mentioned that before. So let's just preview that tool path. That's pretty easy. Let's take a look at our top rings. Now we're going to see that when we, with those vectors that I selected, this is the inside. This black vector right here is actually inside of our bank. But I, I made an offset of that vector inside just slightly. That way this um, pocket is a bit bigger on the inside than what I want. And that way, um, if there's any kind of extra material here, it's actually going to clean it off and give me a nice sharp edge, which is what I wanted to have on the inside. And that worked out really quite well. We're using that same end mill that I've been using. We're going to actually do an offset tooling and we're going to calculate that and we'll preview that tool path and everything looks great. We're going to do the center ring shelf which is the same tools, the same idea, a little bit of an offset but we're only going to go down a quarter inch instead. Let's calculate that and preview that visible tool path. Looks great. Let's go to our next one which is our bottom shelf same idea exactly the same thing only down a quarter inch using the same end mill calculate that up let's have a quick preview of that looks good now we're going to do our profile of the top ring again there are no tabs in this none whatsoever we're just going to go around it and and get that done we're going to go down half the depth of our, our material which happens to be 0.6 of an inch and we're going to go outside that line. There are no tabs. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And we'll preview that tooling. This looks great. Let's go ahead and with our center ring. Same thing. Bring it down about half of the material thickness. Outside, no tabs. Calculate that. Let's preview that. Now you'll see that because we went down 0.6 and our profile was down 0.6 that you don't really see the shelf inside here where on these ones you do but that's okay not to worry about that that'll all make sense in a minute. Let's go to our bottom profile same difference that we did before 
except we're only going to go on the outside, not on the inside, because we need to keep the bottom of this. So we're only going to use this outside vector. Again, no tabs. We'll calculate that. And let's preview that visible toolpath, and you'll see that we're left with that. That looks great. Now the next step we're going to do is our roughing of our bottom. So it's going to go in the middle of this, it's going to rough this all out, leave us a little bit of material behind so we can go in and we can finish it out nicely with the same ball nose that we used for the top. Let's have a peek at that and you'll see that we're going to go ahead and use, perhaps we're going to use selected vector and we're going to calculate that and then we're going to go ahead and preview that visible tool path and it's going to go down and rough that out for us. It looks great. Have a look at our finishing pass. And again, we're going to use a quarter inch ball nose end mill. All that looks great. We're going to use a bit of a boundary offset. Same as we did for the top. Actually, that doesn't need to be there. We can make that zero. Let's calculate that. Let's have a quick preview of that. Clean that up nicely for us. Looks great. Wonderful. So that's great. So let's close that down. Let's go to our other side and have a look at the other side. Dowel holes again. We're going to cut these after we remove our material. After we cut the top side, we're going to take that away. We're going to cut these right into our spoil board. Um, and nothing has changed. We're just going down slightly less deep using the same end mill. Calculate those up and let's preview that visible tool path. And again, my same top tip, if you can look through and you can see through those, as long as you've got both sides being previewed, then you can go ahead and see that those are going to line up perfectly. Let's do our top shelf, which is going to be a, it's going to leave behind the lip that we need. We're going to use a, the end mill the same as before. We're going to go ahead and calculate that. And let's preview that. Looks great. Most of these tool paths are pretty boring looking in the end, but they're they work out really well. This is the quarter inch. We're gonna cut down. We're gonna use the same end mill, all the same settings. Calculate that. Let's preview that. Then we're gonna go ahead and do our top outside. And we're gonna go ahead and calculate that. We don't need to do uh, another shelf for the bottom, right? So that was that's why that, that tool path is missing because we need the material that's left behind to do our molding tool path. We're cutting down half of that, half of material thickness. We're using the outside of the vector. We're adding in some tabs. And we're gonna go ahead and calculate that. And we're gonna preview that. And when it's all done, we when it's all finished, we should be able to see through it. So those would be perfect. It'll work super, super, super lovely. Let's just go ahead now, same deal with this one, 0.6, outside, we've got some tabs, and we're going to calculate that up, preview that tool path, works fantastic. Now we can do the bottom ring profile, same depth, everything's the same, we've added in tabs as well, calculate that, preview that tool path. And we're all the way through. Now we're going to go back and do our molding toolpath. So to create a molding toolpath, we've gone ahead and we've used this profile vector and then this vector here for it to follow around. That'll give us a beveled edge that we want. So, and we're only going to use one tool, which is that same quarter inch uh, ball nose end mill that we used to, to clean out the bottom of the inside and also the top. So we haven't added any extra tools. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that and let's preview that visible tool path. And we'll have that. The molding tool path is really powerful for adding little bits like that to your projects to clean up the edges, to round things over. Um, yeah, those of the, that may have a router table or something like that, that's probably a quicker way of doing it. But in this case, you can do it right on your CNC and everything's going to be super accurate and ready to roll. So that looks great. Now what you can do is go ahead and save off that tooling and we can go ahead and cut that off. Now just again, I'd like to say one more time that the way we set these up is you can go ahead now and cut this center ring as many times as you would like and just by choosing the right tool paths and saving them out and you can stack up your rings as much as you would like to make your coin bank as, as tall or as short as what you'd like to have.
Okay, let's go ahead and cut this thing. When I was saving out my tool paths, I chose to save out all the tool paths that used the same cutter. That way I didn't have to load in a bunch of tool paths one at a time. You may choose to do this if you'd like, but if not, the option is great if you just want to start the machine up and come back when you have to do a tool change. dry fit the lid into the top ring so I had taken the the lid out did some sanding on it and got it good enough that it that it would fit in there what I thought would fit in there in there I test fitted it in it was a little bit tight so I went back to my tooling I did a slight offset and this is the way that this is the file that you're going to get it has a slight offset in there of 0 0.005 went and just cut that that shelf again and that worked out perfect for the lid the the ring and the center ring and the bottom are quite snug when you put them together. I wanted it that way so I didn't have any play in there and everything would fit nice, nicely together and give me a nice smooth outside edge once I had it all sanded down.
Now that you've seen how we've made that, um, I want to share with you a couple of mistakes that I made while we were putting this together. In the software I showed you that the lip on the lid is actually a 0.6 of an inch tall and so is the, the shelf to fit it into. Well, by mistake, I had glued the top into the bottom and we had to pry it apart because we were using fast setting glue and that was kind of a bit of a challenge. So make sure that you stack them up properly so you know which one goes into what. If I had a drum sander, I would have cleaned up the inside a bit better. That was a bit of a challenge, but we managed to do it and it looks, looks pretty good. Um, if when you cut your rings, they don't quite fit snug together, all you need to do is take them apart, make sure you dry fit them first, but take them apart and use some sandpaper and just sand those lips down a bit and that way they'll fit together a little more snug. Um, Feel free to, to, to customize yours as much as possible. You can add V-carving here. You could put in a design and make model. You could do all kinds of customization, whether you're saving for a wedding, a vacation, maybe a special treat night out. Use it for all kinds of things. Now also we've included in the, uh, the file that you can download um, a small version of it that you make out of a, a three quarter inch piece of material. It has a beveled bottom. That way it'll fit into a votive candle holder. I know you probably burn candles and you probably have a ton of these little dishes hanging around. So this makes a nice little coin dish um, if you want to try and cut that. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe below. If you'd like to cut that yourself, make sure you log into your VNCO account and download your free files. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Be safe and we'll see you next time.